Hi everyone, my name is Joanne Schmidt and I am the Curator for Indigenous Studies and World Cultures at the Glenbo Museum. Earlier this week, it was the very first International Day of Clean Air for Blue Skies, declared by the UN. During these past months of the pandemic, many of us spent more time outside appreciating how clean air and blue skies positively impact our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. But to many cultures, these things are not so far removed from their daily lives. They are honored and respected, appreciated, and cared for daily. According to the Assembly of First Nations, we must honor air. Air is a life-giving force and necessary for survival. The element of air stands for the life force that brings all people into existence from their very first breath. Air also symbolizes the mental and spiritual process which brings understanding and inspiration through thought and form. Clean air is important to all forms of life. In the modern age, air pollution has become an increasing concern for society and government. Our actions today will determine the quality of air for the next seven generations. There are many artworks in the collection which acknowledge the importance of clean air and the environment or celebrate the sky and all living things and other entities which occupy them or rely on it, such as animals, stars, clouds, and dragonflies. This week, we will focus on four bags in the collections that honor the importance of air for all living beings. First, we would like to look at two beautiful beaded bags that feature the sky. The first is by a plateau artist. This beautiful bag is fully beaded on black velvet and features a horse in the center with two stunning blue stars in the sky up above. Stars feature prominently in many stories of the Plateau First Nations and also appear at rock art sites. Indigenous peoples were intimately familiar with weather patterns, animal behaviors, and cycles of plant life, water supply, and the seasons. They studied the stars named the constellations, and knew when solstices and equinoxes occurred. The second is by Nahuawak artist Millie Mackinac. Two elks stand against a white and green mountain and in front of a beautiful blue sky. According to L.J. Makokis, in Teachings from Cree Elders, a grounded theory study of Indigenous elders, the Cree worldview is intrinsically and extrinsically shaped by the members of Cree society and their relationship to self, others, the environment, and the cosmos. It is considerate of all things that have been created and given to the Cree by the Creator. In finding the spirituality of self, one also develops the bonds to nature. Human beings are of the natural world and are related to the animals, plants, and all of creation. While these two examples literally show the sky, this small corn husk bag, possibly by a Nimipu artist, the land and sky are shown abstractly. This bag shows a technique called twining and also uses the decorative element of false embroidery. False embroidery can only be seen on the outside of the bag and is invisible on the inside, except for where it starts and stops. Like most corn husk bags, this bag has different designs on both sides. On this side, the top and bottom are mirror images of a step mountain design of various scale in black, light red, and green. The central section has a red step mountain pattern with a light green and blue cloud and sky pattern divided by a blue lake and river pattern, which is also mirrored. You can see how different the pattern is on the opposite side, though equally as beautiful. The last piece we are going to look at is by contemporary Métis artist Sharon Rose Kootenay. This dispatch case is called Dragonfly and Falling Stars Dispatch Case. The dispatch case is a beautiful example of storytelling and is based on a historic design. The symmetrical design signifies balance and harmony. The pattern tells the story of Sharon's friend Giselle, 
Giselle told Sharon how at the Sundance in Kootenai Plains, the mosquitoes were so plentiful that there were clouds of them in the sky. They were so ravenous and relentless that Giselle and her husband considered leaving the ceremony, and Giselle prayed to the Creator to help them. The next day, a glimmering congregation of dragonflies arrived, and like rainbows, they zipped through the meadow, catching the mosquitoes. If you look at the beaded designs on the dispatch case, the large central image is a dragonfly, the crosses are falling stars, and the green and yellow squares are lakes. Sharon describes, as a prescribed shape, the dispatch case was designed to carry important documents delivered by riders on horseback. As an object that carries cultural significance, the dispatch case has its own story to tell. Imagine, if you will, a newly signed treaty, secure in its beadwork case, making its way across the prairie. The horse and rider travel swiftly through the long grasses, across streams and valleys towards the distant horizon. Guided by the landforms, they ride like the wind, intent on their destination. As observed by the teachings of the sacred pipe, the signing of this treaty has called for and been witnessed by the Creator. When we recall the glowing ember and the rising smoke, we know that our prayers for peace and reciprocity are being carried towards the heavens. As interpreters, traditional artists of the Northern Plains have long understood the relationship between the Creator and his ethereal messengers. As an act of recognition, the artists cut long fringes that represent the tall grass prairie and attach bells and cones to give the wind a voice. In an act of transformation, the deer hide and metal tinkles become living beings, enlivened by the rushing wind. Like the smoke of a sacred pipe, we can hear and see our prayers, cleansed by the wind and carried to the source. As the horse gallops, the fringes of the dispatch case catch and dance in the wind, and in doing so, we see that there are two messengers, which have delivered the treaty's promise. We want to thank Sharon for choosing Glembo as a home for this beautiful dispatch case, and for sharing its story with us so that we could share it with you. I hope you have enjoyed this week's Glembo from Home. The next time you're outside, enjoying the clean air and blue skies, I hope you think about how important they are in your life, and remember the amazing stories, images, and designs on these beautiful artworks created by Indigenous artists, which honour and celebrate the air, the sky, and everything connected to them.